you might be wondering what baking an educational strawberry pie is referring to. And what I'll be talking about is how I used the preparation, implementation, and assessment strategy that's outlined on the CTL website to successfully deliver two 300 microbiology courses last fall. And I had a combined enrollment of 73 students. So on the CTL website, um, the steps of preparing courses are compared to those used when making a delicious strawberry pie. The first step is preparation. So because I knew that our instruction would be completely online by early summer uh, last year, I started with my course preparation in July. And I know it might sound radical, but even for my in-person instruction, I usually do spend a few weeks every summer updating my syllabus reworking my learning outcomes and modernizing the lecture materials. And one thing I've really learned over the years is that developing clear active learning outcomes is the key requirement for preparing a successful course. Now, when I first started teaching a few decades ago, I didn't even know what a learning outcome was or how to approach or integrate learning outcomes. So a few years ago, I took a course through CTL and it became quite clear to me. So learning outcomes from my upper division microbiology courses are quite specific and they are aligned with lecture content, my assignments and also my assessments. So just to give you an example, in, um, in one of my courses, the students work in groups to design a web page where they make a hypothetical commercial product. And my learning outcome is learn how to develop, design and market a web-based product with team members. So you can see that this learning outcome is quite specific and it is aligned with the course material and also an assignment. Now, another example of a learning outcome is acquire and practice problem solving skills by applying general knowledge to technical questions about microbial physiology. So again, very specific, but the point that I'm trying to make is that when you design learning outcomes for your course, they have to be in place prior to structuring and creating the course materials and also the assessments because it's the learning outcomes that you'll use to guide your students towards what you want them to ultimately gain and also retain from your course at the end. Now, the other part of preparation I did over the summer was that I recorded my lectures. And I know there's a lot of discussion and uh, maybe even controversy about whether to record lectures or do synchronous lecturing. But I decided the best way to utilize my synchronous class time in an online course is through discussion of the lecture materials, active problem solving with the students, focusing on class assignments and also concept overview, which helps prepare them for the assessments later on. Now, since I myself have a really hard time paying attention to a screen for more than 15 minutes at a time, I decided to create mini lectures. And what this means is that I never did a lecture that was longer than 20 minutes, but they really ranged from six minutes to 20 minutes each. And I didn't worry too much about the time, except that I didn't want them to be too long. And I posted four to six of these videos per week, per course, and in a week's time, I covered a single topic. So now to do this, it was pretty easy because I just used the PowerPoint lecture material that I had from my old in-person courses. And then I divided that material into a series of mini lectures. And then for each mini lecture, I had an introductory slide that had a title and also the associated learning outcome. And then at the end of the mini lecture, I had an end slide that directed students to the next step that they would take in the course. It could be as simple as watch the next mini lecture or read this article. Now, creating mini lectures was tedious. I'm not going to lie. It was, it was pretty tedious. But, um, and that's mostly because I ensured that the captioning was proper. And if any of you have used captioning software, it can be... A, wrong a lot of the time. So you have to go back through and make sure the captions are correct. And I also spent time cataloging and organizing all of my videos in a library on my U of A YouTube channel, which helped me and the students navigate as the videos started accumulating. So it was the same lecture material I would have covered in person or in synchronous online sessions. I didn't really create new lecture material. 
So the upshot is that I now have a full collection of recorded lectures that I'll be using in a blended course this coming fall if my courses go in person. And that means I won't be giving a single lecture in person, which will save me a lot of time and stress that I often experience in the fall term. Now I have to say that students were universally positive about having asynchronous mini lectures. And the reasons they gave is that they could watch them at their leisure or parts of them. They could do their video watching at any time in their day. They could stop the mini lecture, pause it, slow it down, rewind it, rewatch it. And they had the added value of the captioning. So if I spoke too quickly, cause you can probably tell I, I do speak fast. Um, they, they could slow it down and uh, they had the captioning available. So they got the material both through the words and through my speaking. And not a single student voiced dismay at missing out on 60 minutes of straight lecturing twice a week. Uh, and that was, <laughs> I, I probably would have appreciated smaller lectures too. Now last for preparation, I created a uniform e-class structure where students could very easily navigate to find materials that went from week to week. And each week was structured the same. So there were clear links to the mini lectures, the associated course notes, assignments, assessments, and where to go to for help. So this e-class structure was established well in advance of the term. And so I could populate it with links to the mini lectures as I completed them and also the other associated course materials. So in all, I would say I, I had about 30% of the course material completed and posted before classes began. And that really saved me from a great deal of stress and scrambling during the term itself. All right, so that's the first stage. Now, the second stage for making the strawberry pie and also for making a course is implementation. Now, with the mini lectures and lecture notes posted and available, the students could start each week of the course running. Now, in my syllabus, I have a table that divides up the term by weeks. So the columns of the table have the dates of the week. So the, I, mine were Tuesday and Thursday. And for each day, I had the titles of the asynchronous lecture topics, the synchronous class topic, and also any assignments or assessments that were due that week. So it was really well organized and they knew what was coming from week to week. And the students are not required to attend the synchronous classes except for when they had to present their term project or to be good citizens and watch their peers' presentations. And I should also note that many of my synchronous classes were listed as open office hours. Now, I was a little bit daunted by this. It was actually Graham Pate's uh, recommendation that I do have open office hours. And I thought, well, who's going to just, who's going to sign into synchronous office hours if we're just talking? Well, I was never alone during a synchronous office hour. So I would log in and then people would show up and we wouldn't just talk about course material, we would talk about anything that was even remotely related to the topic. So we'd gab about microbiology, job prospects, homework, what's going on at the university. So pretty much anything that they wanted to discuss. And the students expressed gratitude because they knew I would be consistently available and responsive because that online, online time was in their schedules already and it was reserved just for them. Also, this was really important for community building because this regular informal conversation helps the students feel more comfortable when it came time for them to present their projects to the class. And since both classes had this, um, this oral presentation, it was really important for them to feel like they could come online and they knew who they were talking to. Now, the most important strategy I want to cover in this webinette is the third stage of making the educational strawberry pie, which is assessment. One of the biggest complaints that we discussed in my department that was received by students is that they were over assessed in online courses, and I really couldn't agree more. And what we have to realize and work through is how we match our assessments to achieve our learning outcomes. So in both of my courses, I included a term long project that students would start in the third week of the class. So after the add drop period. And these projects for the two courses are worth 20 and 35% respectively of the total marks. The other thing about these projects is they require the students to directly apply information from the mini lectures. So they can't get away without watching the videos because they need that information to do their projects.
So for example, in one course, the students work in teams to construct the web page for the commercial product. In the other course, the students select a high impact scientific paper that's related to one of the 10 lecture topics in the course. And then they write and orally present a blog style summary of that research. So essentially it's a science communication exercise. Now both courses also have uh, brief formative assessments that are worth between 10 and 20% of the total marks so that students can track their progress in viewing the mini lectures and applying that information uh, from the material. So I don't want the mini lectures to be a waste of their time. I wanted to use that information in assessments and assignments. Now the most important factor in assessment that I found is how to structure exams. So I opted for a take home midterm assessment in both courses that required critical thinking and also directly related to the material from the mini lectures. Now these take home exams were not long or arduous, they were practical and applied. Now these assessments can be challenging to craft, but they do give us an opportunity to genuinely link the transferable knowledge base of our disciplines to our learning outcomes. Now for me in the applied microbiology courses, I wanted the students to learn how to recognize when something goes wrong when growing microbes in large scale reactors. So what I did is I gave them a situation where something observable goes wrong and it kills all the microbes. And then the students have to troubleshoot through that problem to the point where they can correct the problem, but also explain how they did it step by step following the logical flow of the lecture material. And this is what people in microbial bio industries do every day. So it was a super practical exercise. Now in both courses, the students from the fall expressed gratitude for the take home midterm assessments because it showed them what they were learning from the mini lectures. And it also showed them why the information is important in their development as scholars in our discipline, which is microbiology. Now for the final exams, I opted for another take home exam in my applied microbiology course and a timed exam for the other course. And both were delivered on Google Forms because that made marking easier for me. Now the take home exam is appreciated because I gave the students 10 days to complete it and they needed that respite from the time pressure during finals week. And for the timed exam, I wrote the questions to be challenging enough so they couldn't easily look up the answers on Google or um, you know, find the answers to their notes, even though I had unmonitored exams. And again, these types of exams are difficult to create because they do require the generation of questions that aren't solely objective, and it requires critical thinking and deeper analysis. But there are tools on the CTL website to help you navigate through those types of questions. And again, the students found these assessments valuable because it reveals how much knowledge they've obtained over the course and also how much they've retained because they can't just look up the answers and hopefully even longer term after the course is over. Now in reflection, which is also the final stage of the strawberry pie and course making, if I were to change anything, I would think about not having a final exam, but rather I would create a series of mini exams or assessments throughout the term that are worth an equivalent portion of the grade. Now, since I construct my syllabus to cover a topic each week, this would be an easy change for my structure, and it would also prevent the stress that comes along with finals week. And then the big take home concept I wanna leave you with is that as long as you craft high quality and meaningful learning outcomes, it doesn't really matter how many assessments you do or when you do them in the term. Now, our goal as educators is to provide a learning experience where the knowledge that our students gain is hopefully retained for years and helps them throughout their lives. So using practical applied assignments and assessments that match to active achievable learning outcomes is an effective strategy for success. And for the online learning experience, I would say that using synchronous class time to build community and confidence in communicating is a highly effective and valuable strategy that is greatly appreciated by the students. So I hope this webinette gave you some ideas going forward and I'm happy to discuss ideas with you further and thank you for listening.